Okay, as I reported in the OML Embroidery University Facebook group, I have been working in the background for you guys, trying to answer questions that you have. Now what I've done is I've demoed a whole bunch of software and I have picked one that I feel is the best. It does a lot of things great for beginners. Anyways, I'll tell you more after my intro. Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery. Big reveal. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, it's an unsung hero of the embroidery world. I don't know why everyone is not going crazy over the software because it is amazing. It's Perfect Embroidery Pro and it is from dime so designs and machine embroidery and this software is spectacular i'm going to be using it quite a bit and uh we're going to have a whole lot of fun f with it shortly next week or the week after i'm going to be doing live digitizing so sunset with sue i think we all decided on it uh and this is the software that i'm going to be using now i know i know i know not everybody has the software but you'll be able to see how cool this software is. Even if you have your own software, check it out. But you can take anything I do in the digitizing and bring it into your own software. I've compiled a little list of things that made it stand out for me. These are the things that really caught my attention. As you can see on the screen here, these are all pretty cool. And they're all built in. You can do amazing things with the built-in stuff. The first thing I want to show you, though, is that even in, that's the 3D view and that's the regular stitch view, even in 3D view, you can see all your machine things. So I just clicked right here on the eye and it shows the commands. A lot of people ask this, how do I know if there's a trim? Well, this doesn't leave any questions. Where you see the little blue scissors? and we can zoom in on that right there you see the blue scissors that's where there is a trim and i find it fantastic so let's go through some of the elements and as i'm going through i'm going to explain to you why i think this is the best software for beginners the reason for that is there are so many designs pre-done digitized properly that I think any be beginner can play around with the software and have something to stitch before they know it. And I think that's great because it gives you confidence. It makes you feel good. It's awesome. So let's look at some of them. So monogramming is fantastic. We're going to talk about these fonts because, wow, they're amazing. But if you click on the font, this is a catalog of all the different fonts and and different, you know, little things that you can get. Look at all these. Now, tell me you can't make something cute with these letters and a little ducky and a whale. And all you have to do is click and then click OK and it's in that's all you have to do again you can see your trims you can see different things and there we go you can see where everything's going so i think for beginners it's just awesome so uh applique shapes look at all these shapes so for an applique shape you just click you bring it in there it is, and it is all done in an applique. Let me bring my sequence out here just a little bit so you can see it better. Um, isn't that cool? Done, applique. You have to change the order of it uh, because the applique would go over, but you don't need to do anything more, and you could stitch this out. Boom, done. So let's have a look at some more. Monogram designs. These are are gorgeous that you could monogram anything so easily even if you are just a beginner look at this you bring this in again look isn't that pretty but you can see everything's already grouped so i don't have to worry about it and there you go you have a monogram not lined up <laughs> but nice enough 
in a couple of clicks and you can take that to the machine and you can stitch it out. Let's pick some other ones because there's more. There's tons more. Your library is right here and there are a ton of de designs in that. So let's see, um, Perfect Embroidery Pro free designs and you can scroll through. These ones are a little more intricate than the ones I was showing, um, but also fantastic. So that's this one is a, a click and drag. It's all grouped, it's all set up. You can see where everything is. You can change colors, you can do anything like that. So a big, huge free library. One of the things that I love is that you don't have to switch screens to get to the library. That's another thing, lots to choose from. Beginners will love this. These look fantastic. You had great starter designs, but there's more. You have your basic shapes here. These are fantastic but you have here symbols. So let's go check them out. You go to select and we can see them all. Now these are little designs that you can make bigger, but look how cute they are. I love the sunflower. I'm gonna select the sunflower and you just click. Now you can use these designs the same way that you would use uh, a motif stitch. So you can make this bigger, smaller, because they're working files. Let's put on our 3D, beautiful. Obviously you can't make it too small, but you can use them as motif. If you look at the picture that I put up for the title page, the apples are the symbols. So there's so much to do. I think it's amazing. And you can also select crazy quilting. These are some amazing, crazy quilting stitches right down here. You can do a little st search for it. Fantastic. So I love it. I think even just these elements are so versatile. Let's go on to the next thing. These are not in any kind of order or anything. It's just how I happen to do it. So let's zoom out a little bit with Perfect Embroidery Pro. It is super easy to do that. I have to pull this out a little bit so we can see over here. This is where we're focusing on. So you can decide what you want. You can change the spacing. Watch this. Click, go stairs and apply. You always got to remember to click apply. And look, it's perfectly spaced it. So it's like walking downstairs. Isn't that great? I love it. Just one click, you're done. All right, let's get back to the question at hand, which was trimming. All these symbols up here are your controls, things, but the one we want right here is commands. And this is really cool. So let's see if we have it set on none and you can see all these jump stitches. Now, for reference, the dotted lines are machine movement the solid lines are jump stitches. So how do you get rid of the jump stitches between letters? All you have to do is click here on characters and click apply. And look at that, they're all done. And I didn't have to mess around with it at all. You could also do words and click apply. So it'll leave all these jump stitches, but this is now machine movement so it'll trim so let's try another one lines we don't have more than one lines capitals are longer than so you can set it up for trims i think it's awesome but let's have a little more fun with this you guys ready for this this is amazing so characters and click apply and it changed each character to a different color letter corresponding to your color chart down here. Isn't that cool? I think that's really neat. So let's do control Z and get rid of that. And let's try another one because that's awesome. So over here in commands. So we are going to do color change uh, words. So hit apply. Each word is a different color. And again, you can see the first one's blue, the second one's red, the third one's green. Isn't that amazing? I could play with this all day. I'm here to tell you. 
I think that is so much fun. It's amazing. So color change. And if you have more than one line, you can change the colors to the lines. That's outstanding to me. Another thing that I absolutely love that people ask all the time is what size is it best to make the uh, lettering? Because if you make them too big, it's not the satin stitches are going to be too long. If you make them too small, they're just simply not going to stitch out. So this is amazing. You just hover over the letters. That's a little bit off screen, but I'll zoom in. And it tells you each character that is available and it tells you the recommended height range. And I think that's cool because most people don't look up in their manual to see what the recommended size are. There's no excuse with this software. It tells you everything. Now, some of the fonts don't have the smaller letters. They only have capitals and you can see what's in it. So this one is recommended 0 0.2 to 1.18 inches and you will get gorgeous lettering at this size. I want to go over what fonts they have. Not each font, but I want to show you different ones that they have. They are a ton. You will not want any other fonts after this. So these are regular with the red F. These are regular built-in fonts, but wait, it gets better. Hold on. See how many they are? I am still scrolling. My goodness. Now, these are monogram fonts, fishtail. Let's see what that is. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, let's go down here. Puffy foam fonts. How often have you wanted puppy, puffy foam fonts? Well, here they are. Now, I messed with the spacing, so that's why it looks like that. Now, I just put it back to zero, and it's perfect puffy foam fonts and not just one a whole bunch of them athletic yeah isn't that cool but wait there's more these are micro fonts and we're going to talk about those next and these ones are um applique fonts so yeah built right in applique fonts look at that isn't that amazing i love it i'm so happy they're bigger, of course, because you can only do appliques bigger. Um, it would be too hard to do a regular size one. So as far as variety in fonts, this has just about everything. Monogram, tons of regular ones. I am just so happy with it, and I think that is useful, and I also think it's perfect for beginners. Okay, still with me, guys, still with me. Let's talk about those micro fonts. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? This is a regular size font. We can see the, the size of it, 0.79 inches. That's fine. Look at these micro fonts. Let me put on the 3D so you can see it. Now, one of the things about small lettering, it is difficult to do and difficult to get it to look right. It's really, really hard to do. These babies are built in, remember, and look at how clear they are. You could spread some of them out. This one's a little bit thick, but you can still see the insides, and um, I've used these fonts before, and they stitch out amazing. So to me, that is a huge benefit, huge benefit. And again, if you hover over it, it's 0 0.16 to 0 0.31. That is small. This was 0.79, and the first micro font is 0 0.16. So uh, micro fonts, how do I do small lettering? This is your answer. You don't even have to think about it. You can just set it up and stitch it out. So to me, that's huge bonus, huge bonus. All right, moving along, because I want you guys to keep paying attention. These are huge things. Um, look at this stitching. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? And that worked out pretty well. So I'm going to show you two things in this. One of the things I love is you can right-click and you can duplicate and, oh, nothing happens. 
but look, your cursor changes to a cross and you can place your duplicate wherever you want. And I really like that because most of the time when you duplicate something, it just goes right there and that's it. And then you have to move it around and do everything. Yeah, so I like this much better being able to place them wherever you want. So let's pan over on that one. Let's, uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit. And um, I am going to show you guys uh, how to do this gorgeous one. It's rather easy. So if you were to do the projection stitch, if you were going to do it in here, it would be okay. But let's see, hit apply. You know, it's okay. I think it still looks really good. You can change the density. Let's put it at not 30, woo, three. And that looks even better. I mean, it's okay. But what if you want to have a look like this one? How do you do it? Okay, it's still the projection stitch. Let's go back, control Z, control Z. We just want this as a running stitch. And we're going to go into our node mode. And what we're going to do is take this closed path and easily make it into an open path. Love this, love this. It's right here on split line. So I split the line, I right click, I split the line, and uh, it's split. So we'll take this little part here and we are going to delete it. And it's gone. Now we have an open path. So awesome. So let's put down some points. You can use this and, and you can use the projection stitch. Let's put it on here. It's not what I'm looking for. It's a little bit better down on the bottom, gorgeous up here. And we'll change this again to three so we can see. It gets kind of square at the bottom because the bottom is square. So let's flip that back to running stitch here. Let's go. Um, we're going to add a little bit into it. So left click for the line placement and then hold down your control key and left click again for the curved key, which is a nice rhythm to have. So look here, we're going to go here and I'm still doing curved ones and I'm going to go right about here and make some curved ones and bring it back. I'm going to move the other ones out a little bit because I didn't quite do it right. And I'm going to change a few points, but that is what I'm going to do to show you guys I'm going to interrupt myself here because I wasn't doing it properly and I really want to show you guys this effect. So the reason why I'm doing a running stitch over the heart that we split the stitches on is because I want to add something extra. So right at the top of the heart there, this is where we're going to put extra stitches to make this effect. And I want it round, but you can do any shape that you want. So I'm control clicking cross over, make it as big as you want or as small as you want, and make sure that the two points are overlapping right there. And this is going to give you guys such a special effect. You will love it. So continue on down at the heart. And remember, again, this is going to be an open shape. It just helps make the effect better. So once you're done that, hit enter and then change to the stitch that you want. Click apply. Always click apply. And ready? Boom. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, back to our regular scheduled programming. Last but not least, because there's so much more in this software, and this is something that is a huge deal to me. Huge deal. Motif stitches. So to create a motif stitch, you go up here and you make a run stitch. So we'll just, you know, do something like this. Hmm, fine. Hit enter. There's other ways of doing it. I am in the habit of hitting enter, so that's what I'm going to do. And switch over to motif. And of course, this software has tons of motif stitches. Tons. You have to scroll a whole bunch of time. Candle wicking, that's my favorite. I created my own, which I thought was awesome too. And let's just select one. Click apply. Yeah, that one looks pretty good I think I don't I don't mind it 
so pattern length let's make this um bigger so you can see how easy that is to do now to transform it you can see here that this is small and it goes bigger and this is big goes small and then goes bigger again and this one is small on the outside bigger on the inside um how would you do that i know it's a very expensive element in other software um this comes with and it's really cool so variable size linear increasing which means it'll start off small and it'll get bigger so the length here variable let's move this down so they'll be smaller and max let's move this up so they'll be bigger and click apply you ready yeah look now you can really see the differences there so you can play around with this and this is another way of getting your motifs to look awesome isn't that cool so let's try another one with those same settings linear decreasing apply it's the opposite right it's the opposite let's try this one convex apply so bigger on the outside smaller look what kind of effect this gives i think it's really neat and concave hit apply and small around the outside so to me this looks almost like a necklace or something i'm gonna have so much fun playing with them so the last part is on the sides and we are going to talk about these a little bit more what they are are add-ons so this is the main software and you can get add-ons for it the add-ons i'm going to talk about um in another video but i want to play with them and the add-ons can run independently so if you find an add-on that you really like uh, like my lace maker that's one of my favorite ones I played with that for years you guys have seen all the videos hopefully if not then watch them um, I, I didn't have perfect embroidery pro and I still came up with some gorgeous designs another thing that I like it's one-stop shopping which means all of my add-ons are right here and you know what you don't need to switch out for them these are all the tons and tons of lace designs and they're right there and look boom you just bring one of them in and you can edit you can change things you can do whatever you want with it so i'm gonna leave you guys a link in the description of where you can do the demo now as with the majority of demos you can't save or stitch anything out however you could have a fun time playing um i'm going to be using this software quite a bit i'm going to be using designs that i create uh, for the mug rugs and i'm going to show you guys each week how fantastic it is and why i chose this software so that's just a quick run through of everything i hope you guys like this video i hope you guys keep an open mind and check out this amazing software it is in fact sue approved and i love it so thanks everyone for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye